You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Greetings, fellow travelers through the liturgical year. This is Lisa Davis with another Feast Day Quick Take on the amazing St. Raymond of Penafort, who, upon being held against his will on the island of Majorca by a stubbornly sinful King James of Aragon, said, Oh yeah? Then bowed his head in prayer and calmly spread his cloak upon the water, and tying one corner of his cloak to his staff, and making the sign of the cross over the makeshift craft, he fearlessly stepped on and sailed upon it across the Mediterranean Sea to Barcelona, a distance of 132 miles. It's recorded that it took him six hours to make the trip. And it's a recorded historic event. There's reportedly a tower and chapel on the site of his landing on the shore. Can you imagine it? If you were to charter a boat today from Mallorca to Barcelona, Google sources estimate an eight-hour journey in a boat with a motor. But note, St. Raymond, no boat, no motor. God blowing the sail of his cloak and keeping him afloat. On receiving the report of his escape and his safe landing in Barcelona, King James I, in shock and humiliation, repented, changed his ways, and became an ally of St. Raymond, constituting a greater miracle than the cloak boat, considering the ways of kings throughout history. But do you want to know what is really amazing about St. Raymond? Everything else. Born to a rich and noble family in 1175, St. Raymond was a brilliant student, receiving doctorates in both civil and canon law at the universities of Barcelona and Bologna. Truly a prodigy, he began teaching law at the University of Barcelona when he was only 20 years old, then continued as a law professor in Bologna until one day he happened to run into some young men belonging to the newly formed order of preachers, the Dominicans. Immediately taken with this intelligence in the service of piety, it didn't take our saint long to realize his calling. Saint Raymond was 41 years old when he gave away everything he had in the world, wealth, station, and honor, to gain everything else that heaven could offer, and became a Dominican friar. No accident of chance was this, no whim or midlife crisis. Before he was even born, when God put the brain in baby Raymond's skull and the heart in his chest, his creator knew how that intellect and courage could serve him. And so St. Raymond did pick up the gauntlet and serve. We see in his life the proof of St. Catherine of Siena's advice to us, quote, Be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire. So capable was St. Raymond, and so perfect in obedience, that God sent his blessed mother in separate visions to him, to St. Peter and Lasco, and to St. Raymond's old friend, King James, requesting that they establish an order for ransoming enslaved Christians from the Mohammedans. And so, of course, it came to pass. Together, the three founded the Order of Our Lady of Ransom for the Redemption of Captives, and with a direct patronage of the Blessed Mother, this order, also called the Mercedarians, grew swiftly and was blessed with great success. You can learn more about the Mercedarian Order and the plight of Christian captives from St. Raymond's time to our own by following the link to the Feast of Our Lady of Ransom in the show notes below. Anyway, suffice it to say, every chance he got through the rest of his life, St. Raymond supported the work of the Mercedarians, bringing home Christian captives from the Crusades, as well as seeing to the root of the problem, the conversion of the infidels. It's said that at his death, St. Raymond was responsible for the conversion of over 10,000 Muslims. Now, we could stop right there and be thoroughly impressed, couldn't we? But wait, there is more. Somehow, in the midst of all this work, St. Raymond found time to write the definitive book of advice and information for confessors at that time, the Summa de Cassibus Penitentiae, which so impressed Pope Gregory IX that he called up St. Raymond to be his own personal confessor at the Vatican. And that wasn't all. So impressed was the Pope with St. Raymond's learning that he assigned him the task of updating and organizing the previous 80 years of canon law decrees, which effort resulted in the Decretals, which were published in the year 1234. 
This collection of canon laws was the standard in the church well into the 20th century, an extraordinary contribution to mankind in the service of God and the church. And so he labored and studied in Rome for some years, until St. Raymond reached the age of 60, when he was permitted to retire from his demanding job as the cornerstone of the law offices of the Vatican. And none too soon, as far as he was concerned, tired and becoming feeble, he wished for nothing better than to sneak away to the life of a simple Dominican priest in some quiet corner of Barcelona. But it was not meant to be. God wasn't finished with him yet. His reputation of sanctity and capable common sense was well known, and after relinquishing his keys to the canon law office, he was almost immediately called up to serve as Archbishop of Barcelona, much against his will, as is often the case among humble saints called to high office. But already weak of constitution, St. Raymond became ill within two years and was obliged to resign. You'd think... At this point, he'd earned his official retirement papers. But alas, it was still not time for St. Raymond to put up his feet. God had more tasks for which no one was better suited than his humble servant. In 1238, St. Raymond was elected Master of the Dominican Order, the second successor of St. Dominic. I expect he was not thrilled about the honor. But as always, he obeyed the divine directive and tightened his cincture for another challenge. Determined to see to the proper execution of this new post, he set out on foot to visit every single house of friars and nuns in the order. Remember, he was well into his sixties now. During this time, he also managed to set out a new constitution of the order, in which he added a resignation clause for the master. And as soon as the new constitution was adopted in the year 1240, our St. Raymond took advantage of the clause and begged out. Clever fellow. But, as you might have already guessed, St. Raymond was not finished yet. Or, rather, God was not yet finished with St. Raymond. In his extensive travels for the order, he had made the acquaintance of the angelic doctor, St. Thomas Aquinas, who enlisted his aid and encouragement in writing one of his greatest works against the Gentiles, which defends the faith against the arguments of the Jews and the Moslems. This was a natural segue, of course, in St. Raymond's lifelong endeavor, which had always been the conversion of both the Muslims and the Jewish people. In his final years, having mastered the languages, he was responsible for the teaching of Arabic and Hebrew in several Dominican friaries toward this same end. And still, working, 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 into his twilight years, St. Raymond founded Dominican houses in Mercia, which was a city at that time still ruled by the Muslims, as well as in Tunis and Majorca. And he never did get a chance to put up his feet. Until his death in 1275, at the venerable age of 100 years, when he received his eternal reward, the happiness, peace, and blessed rest of heaven. He was canonized by Pope Clement VIII in 1601. His relics can be found in the Cathedral of St. Eulalia in Barcelona, Spain. He is the patron saint of all lawyers, but especially of canon lawyers. And so you see, the miracle of the cloak ride across the Mediterranean was really just a footnote in the biography of St. Raymond of Penafort, whose life was more amazing than any miracle. To his credit, a century of study and hard work, of unflagging obedience to the divine will, in the love of God and the love of souls, all forces that pushed a mere man beyond what he himself thought was the limit of his endurance, to save thousands of souls, and influence generations of mercedarians, of Christian captives, of Catholic lawyers and confessors worldwide. St. Raymond of Penafort help us to remember that rest is overrated. We'll never really be finished until we are in heaven. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints.